Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics, and I had a video request to do capes, so superhero capes, and what I've got here is just a couple, you know, rudimentary sketches of, you know, traditional kind of poses, just so we got something to throw our capes on. So, um, forgive the, you know, the crude nature of the sketches, I didn't, I didn't really refine them all that much, but um, it'll give us enough to work with and get started. So, Okay, so the, the question was um, not only how to do capes, but also how to do kind of a rough style of cape. Uh, so I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you a couple. And first things first, I'll go ahead and start sketching over top of this character, and I'll do a basic design of what I, you know, kind of picture when I do a cape. And I'll just do the folds over the shoulder like this. I'll do a little bit of uh, kind of billowing or flowing or whatever you want to call it. And I'll just kind of rough out a beginning shape first, okay? Real crude, like that. Okay, so it's not the overly long flowing cape that's ridiculously, you know, exaggerated or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and at this stage, it looks very flat. So what we'll do is we'll use that basic shape, but then I'll start to picture if the cape was to maybe fold over itself, start to come in front of the character a little bit. And maybe the same thing on the other side, maybe, you know, I like to do this thing. I'm gonna show you a couple little techniques, one of which is this. If you picture the cape doing kind of this deal, right? And then the parts of the cape, and this works on curtains and whatever, doing something like that. So if you can kind of envision that, that's kind of a neat way to show folds and depth in the cape, and it's real easy to do. You know, if you think about it, all you're doing is this little angle lasagna noodle kind of effect. So if you just remember lasagna noodles, you'll be able to do that effect <laughs> at any rate. Okay, so if you take this and, you know, we do one of those little bends, uh, we'll erase, let me get... The other eraser. By the way, I'm using Manga Studio here, uh, which you can see on the top left, but I always like to specify uh, in case somebody's wondering, you know, what software. I'm also using a Wacom Cintiq. Uh, I use that majority for my line work. So I do use Intuo series for digital painting and stuff like that, but, you know, for speed and for uh, line work, I do use the Cintiq. So I'll just kind of do a couple of these little those folds in there and you know it starts to give us a little bit more shape into that cape not trying to rhyme that was purely accidental okay so <clears throat> let's see here get that in there okay now another quick thing to make uh, something like this look a little bit more accurate or depthy or whatever is to start adding your blocked in shadows now <clears throat> I would almost picture the character's shadows to do something like this. So I generally start with one part, and then I start to work around. You know, like I might do the leg shadow, something like this. And this is really you just picturing how far the character is away from the material. Uh, sometimes you can do the shadows a little bit larger to really push the form out. But that's all just you know subjective you just figure out what you think looks cool and what works and you know it's it's going to be pretty hard to say if somebody uh somebody's doing something like this entirely accurate so just have fun with it and you know do whatever looks cool i would do something like this right here and that would help me you know just create another level of depth to that uh, another thing is i could take these parts that are you know, rolled back, like this little piece there, shade that in. I could also put a shadow, What's uh, what I would consider behind the fold right there. Uh, now another thing to keep in mind when you're doing this type of work, these capes, you wanna get in the habit of thinking of it like, you know, like that the material is going like this, right? And that, you know, essentially you're envisioning it like a 3D space, like that. So the best way to shade that, if you were looking at a fold like this, it was coming out, and we'll say where I'm placing the X is this, the area that's closest to the camera, the viewer. So you have to shade it in a way that 
makes that look dimensional something like this and if you wanted to push that form even further then you'd put maybe a dark shadow right here a dark shadow right here you could do the one shadow a little bit larger on the one side to say that there's more shading or that side is uh, more depthy or whatever so that's pretty much the idea of how you're going to want to envision it. And then if something folds back on itself like this, then there'd probably be a shadow there. And, you know, so on and so forth. And that's just how you start to picture it to really get a look like, you know, that it's coming out of space. That you're, you know, you got to remember everything that you're doing in, in drawing here is just a kind of a trick of the eye. You know, you're trying to make something that's 2D on whether you're using paper or uh, you know in my case digital you're trying to make it look dimensional even though it's flat so it's kind of a bit of you know trick of the eye trickery whatever you want to call it but it is you know you are you're trying to basically make something look more dimensional than it really is okay so now let's zoom in there a bit and you see this is real messy I just put it on another layer because I want to show you, again, I want to show you a couple different ways to do this. Because, you know, if you just show somebody one way, I feel like it's like, yeah, you know, you know, it might look cool like that. But that's definitely not the only way you could do this stuff. So I figure by showing you a couple different variations in style, maybe one of them will appeal to you more in your sense of creativity or style or whatever. So let's see. We got... The other thing that I would do is try to make things look a little bit more dimensional like this. Like, okay, I'm picturing that this bend in the material would recess back right here. So I'll do these little, you know, line breaks or whatever. And then maybe a shadow over here. Let's see if that does what I'm hoping it does. And I'll zoom back to see. Yeah, I think it does. I, you know, and all I was trying to do, if you can hopefully picture it, I'll put an X where I was trying to make it look the tallest. It should be right there. So that's why I put the little bit of line breaks or shading. Now, the other thing that I always do is if I'm trying to make something look uh, like it's got some curvature, and I'll show you by you know, doing it to this right here. <clears throat> if I want this to look rounded, like the shape that I put it, the bottom of the cape I'll actually make the lines go in that direction so to me it kind of subconsciously or maybe more consciously makes you see that shape more by by actually adding the shading in that direction um, you know and that's just me I don't know if that's the right way or the wrong way or whatever but that's just something I feel you know helps push the form around and uh, you know makes you see what I'm trying to uh, convey you know, I do a lot of little texturing, too, where I'll put, you know, a bunch of little shadows and shapes of shadows in the back. Uh, again, I'll push those in the direction that I'm trying to create the form. And then this obviously would be the rough. I would turn that to blue line and clean that up a bit more and try to make it look even a little bit more believable. Now... The other thing that I do with areas like up here where the material is all bunching up around the collar. I'll tone this one down just a little bit. Add one more layer. And I'll show you how I would clean this up and make it look a little bit more dimensional. Uh, again, I use different size and shape lines. Like this. I make sure to put different areas of it higher and lower, like this here. You know, it's better than just drawing one straight shape like that, which would obviously look flat and boring.
okay and so we can here let me paint behind there real quick so you don't see the other sketch lines beneath it Okay, that's better. Yeah, and then just, you know, whatever kind of shading you're already doing to the rest of the character, you would add into the cape. That's essentially how I'd probably look at the material like that. And then I would just keep shading and bringing it out till I got what I want. As far as the overall look. And obviously line weight is another thing that you can incorporate to really push the forms around. So if I put a nice heavy line weight around this part, I show that I'm trying to tell the viewer that the uh, this part of the cape is closer than say this part. So never underestimate how important line weight is. Okay. All right. So, and you know, that's really all there is to it. I basically just keep doing more of the same and that's trying to give shape to the form, make it look a little bit more interesting. Um, you know, not so flat, not so boring. And the next one, I'm going to make a material that looks more rough and, and tattered or tore up, uh, which seems to be real popular these days with a lot of characters, you know, kind of a, this really, <clears throat> you know, damaged kind of cape effect, you know. Um, certain characters, they want to look all pristine and clean and like nothing, uh, nothing can affect them. And then other characters, they want to have this very, you know, grungy, kind of distraught look. So I'll show you both. That way you got a little bit to uh, to pick from and see what appeals to you more. Just trying to fill in a little bit more shadows there. And then I'd go back in, obviously, and do all the little line work that I like to do that takes forever, but you know, gives it a lot more to look at. So, yeah, I generally do a lot of lines in the back area here too to help shade it back. Okay, so there's one way you could do a cape, you know, and that's, like I said, this is a little bit more of a, a clean style. Um, not really the way that I normally do them that much, but, you know, I guess the collar, I do that a lot that way. Um, the other thing that I'll do to the collars too that I think is kind of cool. I don't know where I picked this up, but 
again I'll do those little lines pointing but I'll shade the front part of it or wherever I'm trying to show there's a bit more highlight or shadow so I'll try to round out that form this way too by adding a little bit of line breaks maybe some glare lines back here whatever and all that gives um, the colorist you know uh, some cues as to where to put the highlights. So if you do like this line like this across here You know it shows them that maybe you want to highlight in this area So just remember that's that's always neat to do too Which I didn't really do it right, but you get the idea Okay, so I'm gonna give the uh, the dame over here the more rigid kind of uh, Crazier cape here. So let's try that Okay, so here's another way I like to do uh, the capes, and this will be a little bit more of a rigid style. So what I like to do first, you know, kind of the same on the other, is I like to draw the shape of the cape. So we'll give her this weird kind of funky collar. And this isn't specific to any character. There's lots of characters that do these, so no worries there. Okay, so... We'll do this kind of rigid kind of line work. So I'm picturing that this stuff is in front of the you know the foreground of the cape or whatever. I'll give it a shoulder piece kind of thing here. This will be what's in front. Some of the stuff kind of wrapping around and flowing around the side. This will also be the type of cape where it's just all over the place. Which I think, you know, is a bit more fun to do, really. Okay, so there's defining the, pretty much the overall shape. Now, to add to the rigidness of it, I can, you know, kind of chisel away at the straight lines. You know, do like little tears or breaks or whatever. You know, and this is all just style choices. You don't want it to look too clean. That. You know, you could have a little piece of it flipping up in the back and you would just shade that a little bit differently so you know it's not, you know, you're not changing the overall shape here. The other thing is to make the line weight come in front of it like this and that'll show you that this is in the back and you could also add just a little bit of rigidness to the edging there. So all those little things give you a little bit of an idea that this is part of the cape flipping up in the back there. And you could even shade that down a bit. Stuff like that. You could do the same thing over here if you wanted. I'm going to get in there and really push that line weight around. Okay. Now another thing I like to do if I'm trying to feel out a look of something like this and I want to go in and start blocking in my shadows, but I want to have a little more freedom to do so. I've been doing this lately where I've got the line work on one layer. I'll go to the other layer, immediately turn the opacity down and up the brush size. And I'll just take this fat kind of gray marker effect and I'll block in some shadows. And I really like doing this because it allows me to not be so fearsome of, or not fearsome, uh, scared I guess to play around and drop in a lot of shadows. So I can just really have fun with it. You know, it's on a separate layer obviously, but it allows me to see into the artwork a little bit more and build some good depth in there. You know, you can obviously just erase it back out if you don't like it. But with also with this kind of look of the cape, to really make it look like it's folding on itself and billowing, you want to do a lot with the shadows and make it look like it's, you know, it's really moving around or it's really going in and out of um, recess space. And I recommend you try this. If you're a little leery of creating your shadows, this is a good way to feel more comfortable with it. And then all you have to do after you play around with the shadows and you get them relatively the way that you want, uh, you can, you know, convert that to a blue line even if you want. You can go back to the original layer, add another one over top. I'll just add one. 
size your brush back down and then go in there and you know block them in clean them up a little bit more okay so now that I've explained kind of the way that I would lay all this all out I'm gonna go ahead and time-lapse the rest and you can watch me render this out a bit more and bring it to its you know more finished state so let's see what we come up with 